can I use this finish line strategy to make the start line a goal and get my system more engaged or motivated? And is there any physiology or physiological changes, I should say, to reflect the idea that maybe just visually focusing on the start line would actually get me more excited as opposed to make me less excited to engage in effort? Um, and so, yeah, that that's effective for identifying what you want. But it may not actually be effective for helping you to meet the goal, to get the job done. So colleagues of mine at New York University um, have probed, well, why? Why is that? Why is just, you know, thinking about what you want in your life and, um, and sort of putting yourself vicariously into those shoes, imagining what my life will be like if I can accomplish everything on this list? Why doesn't that work? Well, first of all, does it work? The answer is no. And why does it not work? Uh, because what happens, these colleagues, Gabrielle Oetengen and, and, her, and her research team have found, is that, you know, going through and dreaming about or, or, or visualizing how great my life will be when I get X, Y, and Z done, um, that, is, that is like a goal satisfied. I have identified what it is that I want. I have experienced it, even if just in an imaginary way. I've had that positive experience of, of thinking about well, how great my life is going to be when I get this thing done, start to sort of rest on their laurels. She's actually measured systolic blood pressure and heart rate. And, and they found that people who do that, who go through that experience of visualizing how great my life will be when I get X, Y, and Z done, their, their systolic blood pressure, the bottom number on your blood pressure reading, decreases. Okay. Now, I'm all about finding ways to relax in New York, right? You're constantly living at a high level of stimulation. And so like, cool, great. So maybe I should just like think about how awesome my life will be when I get my bucket, my bucket list done. But motivation scientists know that systolic blood pressure is actually an indicator of our body's readiness to get up and act, to do something. Now, that can be the going out for a walk, going out for a run, hitting the gym. It can also be things like doing math problems right? Even if it's, it's something that's just mental, systolic blood pressure actually goes up in anticipation of your body or your mind needing to do something, taking the first steps on a goal. So then it is, it helps us to understand of like, okay, if I've just created this dream board put myself psychologically in that space of a goal satisfied, why is it bad that blood pressure goes down? Because it means your body is chilling out. It's like, all right, cool. I just accomplished something pretty major. I actually now don't have the physiological resources at the ready to take the first step right now to do something about that. So, so that was a pretty monumental um, uh, finding for motivation. Yes. Like creating these dream boards, these vision boards or to-do lists might actually backfire because it, because it in, a, in and of itself is the creation of a goal and the satisfaction of the goal. And then people understandably give themselves some time to just enjoy that positive experience. So much for the secret. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I guess now the secret folks will come after me with pitchforks. Uh, I try to never say the name. Right? Oh, well, I'm not afraid to say the name. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I imagine that certain strategies might work for other people, but I, everything you're saying again is consistent with what we know about the physiology of dopamine circuits for motivation. So at that same point that we're trying to figure out what do we want to do? What, what is my vision for the future? In those planning sessions, we need to simultaneously uh, think about a couple other things. One is, um, how are we going to get there? So take it out of the abstract, take it out, take it out of this Id idyllic visual iconography and start thinking about the practical day to day. We need to break it down into more manageable goals, not just my 10 year plan for myself, but my two week plan. What, what can I accomplish in the next two weeks and the two weeks after that's going to set me on the right trajectory. That's probably not surprising to anybody who's been thinking about how do I set goals better, you know, plan, plan big picture, think big picture abstractly, but then also break it down more concretely.